Howdy guys, gals, peeps, whatever. So, doing an introduction in the middle. I'd drop everything. A good friend who has a little trailer, like a teardrop trailer he built himself. And plan on going on camping with it later. But somebody offered him, make it, made him an offer he couldn't refuse, so he sold it. Now he needs a trailer. And he's a good friend of mine. I've known him most of my life. And since I'm retired and we're both on fixed incomes now, I can make him a trailer. Because I know how to make trailers. And I can do it really quick. Now to be clear, the last one he sold, he made the trailer. He did a fantastic job. And I helped him, I kind of helped him learn how to do some welding and stuff mentored him, so to speak. But this particular case is a big time element. We've only got a couple of weeks to get this done, so I'm going to put a trailer together. And I'm at a step right now, you can see all this metal. It's complex and you're not going to understand it until I'm done. But I, I think I probably will put some plans on for anybody that wants to figure out how I do this. Like a lot of people can weld, but they don't know how to fabricate. And there's a difference there. People that know the difference know the difference. Essentially it is, if you've done fabrication for a long time, you've looked at plants lots of times. <laughs> Somebody comes and says, make this. In my case, it, the last part of my career was mostly they came to me and just told me what they wanted because they knew I could punch it out. So, that's something that we all learn, right? Every single human that I have ever been blessed with knowing, by the time they get middle aged and longer, you know, grown up doing something, there is something that they are absolutely one of the top people on the planet that know how to do that thing. And the great thing about America is this maker stuff that we talk about, those people that build things and repair things, there is literally millions of geniuses in this country that can make things and people don't realize it. So this is one of those things, helping out friend. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you like it. Hope you get something out of it. I do. Well, guys. What you're looking at is a 10 foot long or 12 foot long piece of receiver tube. What that means is it's two inches inside diameter, two and a half outside diameter, seamless, hot rolled steel tubing. It's what you make the hitch on your pickup truck out of. This particular 12 foot long piece is the spine of a custom trailer. And right now I've got to put it in the mill so that I can put a, a precision 5 8 hole through it so that you can put a, a hitch pin through one end of it. This is so you can daisy chain the trailer behind another trailer or something else behind this trailer. So yeah. Stay tuned! Okay, boys and girls. Step one of a trailer build, emergency trailer build. So this is a spine. It's a piece of receiver tube. Two and a half OD, one and a half ND, ID, or no, no, back up. Two and a half OD, two ID. Makes a quarter inch wall, but it's also seamless tubing, so you can slide a, a towing receiver ball hitch up in there. We're gonna make it the main spar spine of the trailer. 
It's a very small trailer for a very small, like a teardrop camper. So we start with this, this is the main event. So I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna have to clean up all my crap and get all this silver work put away to do this, this real work. This is a little piece of like eighth inch, half inch, eight, you know, half by one eighth steel. And I will weld it and wrap it around this end, make it look like a towing ball hitch. This will be the very back of the trailer. But yeah, put a 12 foot pole or 12 foot seamless pipe and an 18 foot long building to get it into the mill to use an annual cutter, an annular cutter out of a kit to drill a 5 8 inch hole through there precision so I can put a hitch on it. Now I just got to cut a bunch of stuff and weld it together. Stand by. trailer or making something with uh, structural tubing now this anybody that's a that's a fabricator is looking at this saying what are you doing with that on a trailer it makes sense later but sometimes you got to make a 90 degree bend right you got to make it go 90 there's all kinds of saws that that do it for me and my little tiny shop, stuff like this. It's a tape measure, a square, a scribe. I set out my angles, I measure them, I scribe them, and then I cut it out with a little tiny two inch low power. This is like a $20 die grinder, electric die grinder. The fact that it has no power is what makes it so safe. Because if you really bear down on this thing to where you're liable to shatter a blade and fling it at you, it'll pop its little breaker. This is a this is kind of a good little tool. If it's and it's like 20, 30 bucks. If it gives out, I throw it away. But meanwhile, these cheap little things are wonderful. Because we could do things. I remember when finding one of these to buy was $300. So, probably cost the guy $20 in the first place. He just sold it for $300. Anywho, so you got to make minor cuts. You got to have measure and to make 90s. And there's lots of ways to do it. My way isn't the best way, it's my way. So, now I got to do the same thing here. If you look at these two miners, Consider this. I don't know how good you can see this. Let's see. Let's zoom it down. See right here is a miter and here's a miter. They're going to join these two long pieces. So I need opposite miters. Now I have these four pieces of structural square tubing, SST, with the weld facing up. And when this thing's assembled, 
these guys are going to have another piece of metal on top of them. So I'm welding them with the seam being encased, laminated. I have no idea whether that makes a bit of difference, but my OCD just thinks it looks better with all those seams oriented the same direction. Anybody else? Do it how you like. <laughs> so that's the process I'm in right now. <coughs> I can tell you that here in my town, I bought two sticks of this, 20 foot sticks, a 12 foot piece of genuine true receiver tube, and then two 20 foot sticks of 3 16 angle iron. One of them is two by two and the other one's two by three. And it was 350 bucks. So the frame of this trailer in southern Arizona today, just for the metal, is 350 bucks. So yeah, you can find a cheaper trailer, but you can't find one that's custom made. So yeah, here we go. So I'm going through and cutting all the metal into the pieces that I need to piece it together. And I'm working in this little tiny shop because it's 100 degrees outside. God loves the desert because he gave his people fortitude. So, you see i got these four pieces. These are going to make a rectangular box that ends up five feet wide, eight feet long. It will be the, the riser that holds the teardrop trailer body onto the frame. And so, one end of it, I want mitered corners so that when you look at it, you don't see any welds or anything. It's a solid piece of steel going around the edge. And so, how I do it, I start by taking my little level, my little square, and I just make sure that all the metal is pretty much along the same plane. Oh, my little, this ain't gonna work. So, once I get it like that, I can do two things. One, I can check these two cuts to see that the end of the cut is close. Now, I give myself a tolerance of a sixteenth of an inch maybe 330 seconds when it comes to this kind of stuff because when you have an eight foot long pole you get a tiny little error here and by the time it's at the end of that pole it ends up getting pretty big so all I do is draw a line right there to mark the baseline of these miters then I take these out of the picture Now I know that if I want my two welded line marks to face up when it's completed, these two miters have to be opposites. Sure, you could cut them identical and turn it over and get your opposite. But if you're concerned about some aspect of this pipe and you wanna keep it oriented, you gotta make opposite miters. Simple matter. So now that I got these marked, I can take them out and I can put this guy right here and this is important. This edge of the, of the scale right here that you're going to use to mark this line, you want it to line up as close as possible to this surface as it goes down. So your cut should match this guy. So there's one. And like I said, I give myself a sixteenth of an inch plus, you know, on this one, that's the tolerance is zero minus minus zero plus up to sixteenth of an inch. 
right? So now I've got that. This is the fun part. We have to carry this parallel line across the back. And I usually just kind of real carefully do a straight cut over the corner. Right? So then, if I go in here and mark this guy, see? There's my mark, across here, down the other side. And then I bring this guy over here, do it the same way. Now it's, now it's marked. I got a scribe here and a scribe here. Then I cut it.
then you gotta Alexa, stop. I don't want somebody to get all excited because they heard a piece of a music on my video that belongs to someone else. You know how that goes. Anyway, after that, after that cutting, that's when I start to clean it. Start cleaning up the pieces to get the oils and dirt off of them. You can see this rusty old receiver tube they gave me. They're probably happy to get rid of it. A lot of welders are uh, rightfully so prima donnas when it comes to rusty steel. I mean, if you're in a production shop and you pay top dollar for a piece of steel and it comes rusty, man. Comes fighting words, man. But for me, it don't be, it's no big deal. I got plenty of time to clean it. Oh, I seen some welders get mad. I seen them get mad if you sweat on their metal. Because you're going to rust it. All right. All right. Enough said. This is the next step. Check my ring. A little bit of sauce. Make a nice little hole for one of these guys. So, given that I'm making a frame out of tubular steel for a trailer, and trailers tend to have wires running all over the place on them, what I do is, on these support pieces, I pre-drill holes and put grommets in them. See down here? And then when I go to weld it together, I'll run a piece of MIG wire all the way through there and pull it out the end. I'll drill a little hole and put a self-tapping screw to tie the wire onto. So then when you go to do the trailer itself and wire it, you've got the holes with the grommets all ready to run your wires through and you have a wire in there that you can hook your main wires to and use it to pull them in there. Once they're in there, the little hole that I used to put a screw to hold the wire on is now a ground point for your trailer wiring. Work smarter. Otherwise, you get done, you end up laying on the ground under the trailer, drilling holes to put wires in. Why not do it while you're standing up? So here's what I was talking about. Anybody that's gonna build a trailer. If you look on the right, these guys right here, these two those are the ones that go all the way from the front of the camper box to the back this end right here is going to be the end of the trailer these two are mitered to join onto here so it'll be like this so that's going to be like there this little piece of the wire from the MIG welder, I will feed through this hole right here and tie it off. Those guys over there will end up being welded to this receiver pipe to make the back frame for the trailer box, the little camper. And again, the reason I put this in here when I'm fabbing it is that if I decide I want to run a wire through that empty pipe sometime in the construction process, I've got a wire I can hook to it and pull it in there. It's just because I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't like drilling holes and crawling around the ground any more than, possible, than I have to. Nice, huh?
Now let's check over and over and over. Now, a thing like this, I get my fingers in the middle, pull the other end, and I can shift it in there. Get as parallel as can be. So it's still in on the out, so I'll tap it out. Tagging it with the, tacking it with the MIG welder. And then that, I won't do any more welding on this until the old, until it's all jigged up on the on the frame, on that frame, all lined up, and it's all tacked. When I get everything done, then it'll be a, a lot of welding, finishing all these seams. I'll use TIG and the MIG on a lot of it. Okay, here's one of the wings. I've got it clamped onto the piece of receiver tube, because that thing is really straight. And now you can see the angle iron goes up like this and then across. This lip right here will be where you put the bolts through the floor of the camper. It's a wood camper. So you can bolt it all along the edge. It'll be captured inside the angle iron. Pretty cool. So there's two of these that come off of each side of the receiver tube that makes the two sides of the trailer. Okay, cool. It's kind of hard to see from here. I hope you can see it in this picture, but got a string line. See it right about here. And it's going around the angle iron and all the way to the other end it's tied to that clamp. And then over here by the where the string's hanging, there's a little machinist jack under there that I'm using to raise and lower the bar that the that this half is sitting on. And this is the half that's welded to the receiver tube already. So what I'm doing is I am moving it up. On each end there's two centimeters between the string and the surface of this tube. Two centimeters. Let's see if I can see this. Two centimeters right here. In the middle it's Two centimeters plus about three or four millimeters so what that means is that I've got it bowed up on the end and that's exactly what I want so now it's all set indicated with a slight upward load kind of tilt it up just a tiny bit and then I'll weld it all together and I'll leave it there until it cools and it'll set that metals memory in that position so that, that's how you keep it straight when you're welding it.
Okay, so here's the frame all welded together. Now, I apologize if someone wanted to see me do all that welding, but to be frank, it's just hours of positioning and measuring, and I really don't want to bore a lot of people with that. And it's kind of personal anyway for me. I mean, I spend a lot of time being very meticulous. So to videotape it all, or even with this phone, it's too much. In any case, this is a, an intermediate level welder thing here, this trailer. But an experienced amateur could do one. So there you see it. Right now I'm waiting for the parts to put the axles on because I need shock or uh, spring mounts and springs. And right now you're looking at the bottom of the trailer. So I've got it upside down so I can put the, the springs on. You can even see right here perhaps. There's the center of the box, the cargo area. And one foot behind that is where the center of the axle is going to be. That's it. And of course, this particular trailer has a class two hitch, basically. Going all the way from one end to the other. Now I wouldn't be towing anything huge back here, but you can put a nice stand to hold luggage or gas cans or something or, you know, whatever nice so yeah waiting for parts and I should ask uh, the guy that's gonna get this what color he wants hmm that's a good question